Christina Keneally's comeback has created a much tougher contest for the Sydney seat of Benelong, but will her high profile work to her advantage or against her? Christina Keneally is a seasoned political campaigner. And she's ready to do it all again in the battle for Benelong. I am definitely starting out as the underdog in this campaign, but I've never shirked from a fight. New South Wales' first female Premier rose to power in 2009 after rolling Nathan Rees, who accused her of being a puppet of Eddie Obeid, the former power broker who's now in jail. Obviously, um, uh, Eddie Obeid and Bill Shorten have, uh, you know, uh, formed the same view about Christina Keneally. This is the sickening rubbish that has been thrown at Christina, frankly, for many, many years. Christina Keneally cleaned up the New South Wales Labor Party. Christina Keneally led Labor to a landslide loss against Barry O'Farrell in 2011. I congratulate Mr O'Farrell. After a stint as the CEO of Basketball Australia, she joined Sky News. No, 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 I'd let you speak. I'd let you speak. Not... Her decision to run in Benelong turns what might have been a straightforward contest for John Alexander into a potentially much tighter battle. It puts the government's majority at risk, although it doesn't risk the government falling. And it has such two, two high-profile candidates. It, it's hard to turn your eyes away from a contest of this type. The seat's best-known former member is confident it will stay in Liberal hands. He won't take uh, Keneally's opposition lightly. He, he, he's a very sensible bloke, but uh, uh, I think he'll make it. Christina Keneally's a woman, so that's nice, I guess. I'll be voting for John Alexander anyway. I think he's a good fellow. They'll make their decision on December 16th. Jade McMillan, ABC News.